If there's one flat earth name that I hear time and time and time again from the Flurfers, it's Witsit Gets It. They have truly placed him on some sort of pedestal as being an all-knowing, undefeatable flat earther. Well, I've looked at Witsit before, but I think it's past time that we look at him again. <laughs> Simandan and use that promo code Simandan to get that whopping 83% off plus your three months extra free. Right, back to today's video and Witsit gets it. Now he is of the belief that Earth does not move at all. And in his series True Earth 101, he's going to talk about this motion. Now, a quick caveat here. Witsit is very, very good at retaining information and he speaks well. The trouble is he twists and turns the truth to suit his narrative. Using complex words while sounding confident, yet in reality he knows no retaining information and he speaks well. The trouble is, he twists and turns the truth to suit his narrative. Using confusion. Now, a quick caveat here. Witsit is very, very good at retaining information and he speaks well. The trouble is, he twists and turns the truth to suit his narrative. Using complex words while sounding confident, yet in reality he knows nothing more than a primary school child. Take it away, Witsit. I can construct for you a spherically symmetrical universe with Earth at its center, and you cannot disprove it based on observations. You can only exclude it on philosophical grounds. In my view, there's absolutely nothing wrong in that. What I want to bring into the open is the fact that we are using philosophical criteria and choosing our models. A lot of cosmology tries to hide that. You don't say, George. I mean, it didn't get any better since you've made this quote. They completely try to hide it. They call it science and they deny that it's, it's basically philosophy. What he's saying here is that you can treat the Earth as stationary and in the center of the entire universe and you can't disprove it with any observations. You can only say, I don't like it philosophically. He says, I don't see anything wrong with that. Well, I disagree, but at least he <coughs> tried to point it out to people because he said people try to hide that fact and claim it's science. You know what else George Ellis said when talking about the independent movie The Principal, which is a film about Earth being of a geocentric nature, he said, and I quote, I was interviewed for it, but they did not disclose this agenda, which of course is nonsense. Nonsense wits it. Did you hear that? Claim number one is that the Earth is in motion. The Earth is supposedly spinning over a thousand miles per hour at the equator while revolving around the sun 66,600 miles per hour on an actual tilt of 66.6 .6 degrees. That's a positive claim. We need to kind of test that. And let me just break down some basic logic here. Do you ever experience that the Earth is moving? Of course not. We can stack rocks up. We actually notice when the Earth moves, it's called an earthquake, right? Because it's actually moving from its previous stationary position. We can see smokestacks going up just straight up in the air. From our observation, the Earth's not moving. How many times do we have to say this? Human senses are pretty rubbish. There are times when you can absolutely not trust them. But time and time and time again, the flat earthers always say, but can you feel the earth move? Of course we can't, because we're in constant motion, which according to physics means we may as well be stationary. Now, the globe claims it is, you just can't tell. Okay, maybe so. But you have to verify that, you know, you have to give us some type of evidence to truly substantiate that because the default position based on all empirical evidence, whether that be how we shoot missiles, how we fly planes, how we fly helicopters, how we do anything, we assume that the Earth is stationary and how we even look at anything in quote unquote space is we assume the Earth's in the center and stationary. And this is because everything else on Earth, including the atmosphere, is moving too. As I said earlier, constant uniform motion means we do not feel it. And it is the same as saying that we're not moving. Therefore, to save a load of mathematical problems, it's just easier to assume that the Earth is not moving. By the way, Witsit, you believe when NASA says in a few pages, we do because the default position based on all empirical evidence, whether that be how we shoot missiles, how we fly planes, how we fly helicopters, how we do anything, we assume that the Earth is stationary and how we even look at anything in quote unquote space is we assume the Earth's in the center and stationary. And this is because everything else on Earth, including the atmosphere, is moving too. As I said earlier, constant uniform motion means we do not feel it. And it is the same as saying that we're not moving. Therefore, to save a load of mathematical problems, it's just easier to assume that the Earth is not moving. By the way, Witsit, you believe when NASA says in a few pages that we can assume Earth is not rotating for the sake of mathematical modeling of flight simulation but you don't believe in anything else nasa says you see how that seems a bit off wits it so if you're and this is because everything else on earth including the atmosphere is moving too as i said earlier constant uniform motion means we do not feel it and it is the same as saying that we're not moving therefore to save a load of mathematical problems <laughs>
pum 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 pum. <laughs> oh, pum 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 pum. <laughs> Bum, 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 Imagine browsing YouTube and coming across a video that tells you 10 good reasons why the Earth isn't a globe. Now for me that would be commonplace, but for most people they'd be thinking, what is this about? Well the creator of this video thinks that these reasons are undebunkable, would you believe? Well there's only one thing for it then, isn't there? Let's debunk the hell out of them. <laughs> Right, back to today's video, which comes from the Tomb of Illumination. Weird name, I know. He thinks he's got ten undebunkable reasons why the Earth is not a spinning globe. And we're going to look at the first five today, so without further ado, away we go. Welcome everybody, welcome to another video on physics. Actual physics concerning our flat Earth system. This is the Tomb of Illumination. Check out my other videos if you haven't been here before. But today I'm going to go through ten... Ten... <coughs> Uh, undebunkable proofs that you live on a flat earth, not a spinning ball. Undebunkable, hey? The arrogance. It's funny, isn't it? Anybody can go and check on these things themselves and verify what I'm saying. They're undebunkable. Pretty strange if you live on a ball, how all these things correlate. We shall see, my friend. We shall see. <coughs> so if you haven't seen the flat earth model before, you're new to the channel. That's basically looking down on the Earth, small centre north, 
wider southern field out here all the way around because that's what a uh, that's what a uh, torus field would look like something similar to this so a donut we're on donut earth now are we center north in here an expanding field expanding as the hyperboloid center comes out it expands outward that's why we have a book called the bible the bull represents expansion pretty sure the word bible came after the said creation of the bible but what do i know bi mean dual male and female the whole system's male and female we could say that strong northern center this here magnetic confinement very strong male weaker force out here is the female because it's more widely distributed same energy here as there is all the way around here but the magnetic cycle ratio this is weaker than in here well that was a colossal load of words salad small center north wider southern field out here all the way around because that's what a uh, that's what a uh, torus field would look like something similar to this so a donut we're on donut earth now are we so a donut we're on donut earth now are we so a donut we're on donut earth now are we an expanding field expanding as the hyperboloid center comes out it expands outward that's why we have a book called the bible the bull represents expansion pretty sure the word bible came after the said creation of the bible um so so you spin you know when you spin pizza dough it kind of flattens out it gets wider in the middle and so earth throughout its life even when it formed it was spinning and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the pole so it's not actually a sphere it's an it's oblate and officially it's an oblate spheroid that's what we call it but not only that it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator a little chubbier a little chubbier yeah chubby is a good word. it's like pear shaped yeah. so it turns out the pear shapedness is bigger than the height of mount everest above sea level how much higher is um so, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. It gets wider in the middle. And so Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the pole. So it's not actually a sphere. It's an it's oblate. And officially, it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby is a good word. It's like pear shape. <laughs> so, it turns out the pear shapedness is bigger than the height of Mount Everest above sea level. How much higher is the tall mountain that you identify in the book which name I. Pum, 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 pum. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah? <laughs>